When was the last time that you shared the gospel with someone who didn't know Jesus? When was the last time you shared Jesus with your family, your loved ones? The key to true and passionate, bold evangelism is the fire of the Holy Spirit. The fire of the Holy Spirit is the key to passionate evangelism. The fire of the Holy Spirit is the key to a love for souls. When was the last time that you shared the gospel with someone who didn't know Jesus? When was the last time that you shared Christ with your family or your loved ones, your neighbors or your friends, your co-workers or fellow students? That fire for evangelism, that passion for souls, that burden for the lost comes only by the Holy Ghost. Exodus chapter 3 says this, One day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. So Moses now is going into the presence of the Lord. Verse 2, There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement, though the bush was engulfed in flames. It didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. Now here I must interject that fire, biblically speaking, is a symbol for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Often when you see fire in the scripture, it symbolizes the presence of the Holy Spirit. Verse 4 says this, When the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush, Moses, Moses, here I am. Moses replied, Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. So here Moses is having an encounter in the presence of God. He's standing in the very glory of God Almighty, of course, the Holy Spirit present there also. And in this encounter, Moses is transformed. In this encounter, Moses has his perspective shifted. His mentality changed. Verse 7 says this, Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. Verse 10 says this, Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people out of Egypt. After Moses has this encounter with the Lord, suddenly he's no longer living for what he was living for. Suddenly, new purpose appears. Suddenly, a destiny unfolds before him. And he begins to see what God sees. He begins to hear what God hears. You see, the Israelites in slavery to the Egyptians is a prophetic picture. The slavery of the Israelites That's a prophetic picture of people in sin. Sin is a harsh master. Sin keeps people in bondage. Sin strips people of their dignity. Sin snuffs out the divine spark within every man and woman who sins. Sin is slavery. If you don't think sin is slavery, just try to stop. Just try to stop on your own. You can't do it. So here we see that when Moses comes to the presence of God, when Moses stands in the glory of God, he is transformed in many ways. Firstly, his perspective changes. No longer does he see the mundane, everyday things in his life. Now, God has called his attention to people in bondage. When you come into contact with that fire, When you come into contact with the presence of God, God will shift your perspective. 
He will take your focus off of you and he will show you what he sees. When you stand in the presence of God, when you've truly had an encounter in his glory, you begin to see what God sees. What has God's attention begins to have your attention. What has God's ear begins to have your ear. Moses standing there in the midst of this burning bush. That's a prophetic picture of the fire of the Holy Ghost. You want to know how you know if you've truly come into contact with the fire of God? The fire of the Holy Spirit doesn't just produce passion, doesn't just produce excitement, it doesn't just produce what we call revival. The fire of the Holy Spirit is a divine light in you that consumes you and causes you to see and causes you to hear the lost who are bound by sin. Verse 9, I want to read it to you. Look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me, and I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abused them. The cry of the lost has reached the ear of God. So then, Moses having this encounter in the glory of God. Moses coming into contact with this burning bush is symbolic of you and I coming into contact with the true fire of the Holy Spirit. And Moses being sent as a deliverer to those who were bound by the Egyptians. That's a prophetic picture of you and I being sent to a lost and dying world. The Holy Spirit is the fire of evangelism. And once you've come into contact with that true fire, you burn for souls. The passion for souls is in you. The boldness to preach the gospel is in you. I don't care what your personality type is. When you've come into contact with the fire of the Holy Ghost, it gives you boldness to declare the truth. Now the reason we lack in our passion for lost souls is because we lack in our fire of the Holy Spirit. And the reason we lack in our fire of the Holy Spirit is because we're not coming into contact with His presence. That's a true mark. I can't tell you how many times I've been standing in a crowded place looking at the seas of people walking by, maybe at a mall, maybe at an outdoor event, doesn't matter when I see large crowds of people. I can't help but wonder where they're going when they die. I can't help but wonder about their eternal destinies. What are their stories? What are their sins? What are their bondages? What do they need to be healed from? And where are they going when they die? It's a holy burden. It's a holy heartache that the Holy Spirit gives to you. Now let me show you something in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. What did this power do for the people who received it? The power of the Holy Spirit was received, and then what happened in their lives? They became witnesses. When you come into contact with that fire, you become a witness the words begin to pour out of you. You become like Jeremiah. It's like fire shut up in your bones. You have to preach it. You have to declare it. Why? Because A, you want to please the Lord and you want to be obedient to Him. And B, you care about souls. If you want to restore your passion for the lost, if you want to have boldness in your evangelism, if you want to see true power demonstrated as you share the gospel, then you need the fire of evangelism, the Holy Spirit himself. How do you get that, my friend? It's simple. You must spend time in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Like Moses was led to this mountain, so you and I are led to the mountain of God. So you and I are led to the mountain of prayer, the mountain of devotion to God's word. And we must go there. For there in that secret place, we will encounter the fire of evangelism, the Holy Spirit himself. God help us to burn for souls. God help us to love the lost. 
can you hear the cry? Can you hear the cry of the drug addict? Can you hear the cry of the suicidal? Can you hear the cry of the fearful and the depressed? Can you hear the cry of those bound in sin, bound in shame, disconnected from God, aimlessly wandering through life without a purpose, without the love of the Father? Then you must go and tell them that Jesus saves. You are on a rescue mission. God has sent you. May your encounters with God produce more than excitement. May your encounters with God produce more than spiritual gifts. May your encounters with God produce more than experiences that you can share stories about. May your encounters with God produce in you a passion and love for souls. May you contact touch that fire of evangelism and may you hear the cry of the lost may you see their oppression father give us a heart for souls let us burn with that holy fire that we might win some cause us to become your mouthpieces Consume us with the love of the Spirit. We might preach the gospel boldly, without shame, consistently, freely, in the name of Jesus. Ignite our hearts, Holy Spirit. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say, Amen. Well, that is it for the message. Here now is a question for conversation. When was the last time that you preached the gospel to someone? And in what ways can you share the gospel with others? I want to encourage you to subscribe to us on YouTube if you're watching us on YouTube. And click that notification bell that's very important so that you can receive notices whenever we release new content. Also, you can follow us wherever you're watching us. And now here are the comments from a previous video titled, how the Holy Spirit transforms your life. The first comment I'll read from that video comes from Arun Taylor, who writes, Life-changing message for the body of Christ. This was a simple but powerful teaching on God, the Holy Spirit. The I Am Ministry channel writes, I absolutely love this ministry. I'm so grateful for the teachings. Sophia Saram writes, Thank you, man of God, for this message. I'm following you from the country of Kenya. Our dear friend Emily Laramore writes, Amen. Without the Holy Spirit, we are helpless. We need Him every second of every day. And the final comment from the video titled, How the Holy Spirit Transforms Your Life, comes from Felisa Batan, who writes, Blessings, David. This channel has helped me a lot. I enjoy listening to you as you always encourage me to seek the Holy Spirit in prayer. Keep doing what you are doing. I'm watching from Trinidad. Before you finish with this video, I want to encourage you with a small portion of scripture. Matthew chapter 6 verses 19 through 21 say, Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. I want to encourage you to store up for yourselves treasures in heaven by giving to the gospel. Often we try to protect our future by investing in stocks and real estate. Some of us invest in cryptocurrency, and there's nothing wrong with investing in any of those things. That's good stewardship and good planning for the future if you invest in things that are material. But we also must remember the heavenly things. We also must remember the spiritual things. So, I want to invite you to step out in faith. Trust God with your future. The future is bright. God is in control. You can trust Him. So give to this ministry through a one-time gift or a monthly partnership by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Help us continue doing everything that we do. 
the live streams, the media, the events, the Holy Spirit School. Help us do it all and more by becoming a monthly partner or giving a one-time gift. Be a part of what God is doing in the earth through this ministry. And as you do, you'll demonstrate that your heart is in souls because where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Give today, davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Go and give a one-time gift or become a monthly supporter. I encourage you to do both. Do as the Spirit leads. Ask Him how you should give. Go and obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.